This is the smartest Apple Notes productivity system that I've ever tried. But is it worth it for you? I've been using Forever Notes to run my workflow for the last six months. It's not an app, it's not a subscription, it's just a way to organize your notes inside of Apple Notes. Some parts have really stuck with me, and others I've just quietly stopped using since my last video. So I figured I'd share my experience, the good, the bad, what's still in my system today. And of course, you can find all of the documentation for Forever Notes on the creator's website, myforevernotes.com. There's extensive documentation on how to set up the entire system. It's of course free to set up and use. And there is a wealth of information on the forum that he has created. I was initially enthralled with Forever Notes, but I just really can't help myself. So after using it for a while, I started to want to try something new. I'm always after that latest and greatest thing, even though I have a great system that works in Apple Notes and Apple Reminders. I just can't help myself trying out new apps or new systems to see if there's just something a little bit better out there that might help my process out. So implementing Forever Notes was just one more thing on that list that I did to try to help out my Apple Notes system. And it has plenty of upsides, but now that I've used it for six months, I have found a few things that I don't like. And I'll start with those because a lot of the things that are good about Forever Notes that were good about it in the first video that I made are still good now. So I'll start with my gripes and the biggest of which is the journal. Now, it's a little bit hard to, you know, dock points from the Forever Notes framework for the journal because a lot of the things that I don't like about it are just limitations of Apple Notes and Apple shortcuts together. So everybody should know by now you can link Apple Notes together, get back and forth within Apple Notes, but Apple Shortcuts doesn't let you link a note together. So in the journal, every day is its own note. And at the top of that, there's kind of a header that says home note today, month, back and next to try to give you some navigation to get, you know, back a day, forward a day. If you want to jump back to the month view to click on a specific day or work on your monthly planning or get back to your home note to navigate to something else, you have to put all those links in manually. And I tried everything. I just couldn't get over it. It was so mundane. I tried to get, you know, a shortcut support help with it by copying the today link to my clipboard and copying some of the other things to the clipboard and pasting them in. I tried to do it manually. I tried to set it up as part of my weekly review and just link all of the days that, you know, for the upcoming week. I tried to do it at the beginning of the month. Let's see if I can get a whole month out of the way, if that would help. And it really just came down to the fact that I didn't end up using the journal all of that, all that much. Now, I did have a previous journal system in Apple Notes where um, every, every day was its own note as well, but it was tagged, you know, the year onto that as well. So um, today's August 10th, so it was August 10th, 2025 was a different note from August 10th, 2024. This is the one thing I do like about the Forever Notes system that was lacking in my own little homegrown thing. It was hard to tie themes or um, common ideas from my journal together the way that I had it set up. I like the fact that every day is its own note and with collapsible section headers, you could have each year in that same note. So if I was writing the same thing on August 10th of 25 as I was back in 2024, kind of brings some of the day one functionality of like the on this day notification into journal, into Apple Notes, which I think is really good. So if you can get over the manual setup of the journal, I think it's probably the best solution for Apple Notes, but if you have something already set up that you like using for a journal, be it Apple Notes, day one, paper journal, whatever it is, and it's working for you, then you know you might not be all cracked up on this journal, just like I wasn't. So most of those notes have sat idle. You know, I did use the shortcut to create all of them. I've stopped linking them all together. And I don't really want to delete them because I might come back to it someday, but at the same time, I haven't really used it in the past six months, so it might be safe to do. 
That's enough on the journal and we'll go on to hub pages. So I did try to use hub pages, both the home note and then creating one for, you know, all of my YouTube stuff, all of my newsletter stuff and all of my podcast stuff. And I found myself managing those pages more than I was actually doing work. So I kind of took a step back from the hub pages, the way that I structure things in Apple Notes that I've gone over before. Now using tags and smart folders is a little bit more like what Matthias calls um, content hubs, content pages. What does he call them? Collections. He calls them collections. Um, where everything for that specific thing is stored in a smart folder. So I love this for the simplicity. I have three simple tags, YouTube, newsletter, and podcast. And when I'm working on one of those three things, the active Apple note is in that folder. I think I had created too many hub pages to the point where on my home note, it was like, okay, let's go to the content hub. And then on the content hub page, I had YouTube and newsletter and podcast, but, oh, I want an app of the month hub as well, because that's kind of its own thing, even though it's part of YouTube. Then I'd go into that. Oh, I have another idea. Oh man, I should have an idea hub. Let's go there. Ah, crap. None of this stuff is linked together. That's how my brain started doing things in Apple Notes. And so I just had to simplify it to those three tags. So everything now kind of lives in the notes folder. Well, not everything, but we'll get there in a minute. But this is one of the great takeaways that I had from the Forever Notes system. I really probably would not have moved from my para folder structure and manually updating where everything was in each folder to tags and small smart folders without the forever notes framework. So from that standpoint, I'm thankful that I found this because my system in Apple notes is just dead simple. Now there's almost no complexity. I have shortcuts that do a lot of the things that I want to do to take some steps out and make things faster. And when I'm done with it in the active YouTube folder, I tag it with posted. That way, everything that I've posted to YouTube goes into that folder. And this is a little bit of a carryover from my previous system. So I have started to go back to the notes folder and clean that up. So as I put things in posted, I'll move them from notes to my archive folder. That's just a carryover, personal preference of mine. My main notes folder gets pretty cluttered right now. It has like 180 some notes in it. Definitely not all of those are active. I might only be, you know, using four or five active um, notes at a time with the various projects that I have going on. So I have been trying to clean that up little by little. And it just makes me feel a little bit better when that number is smaller, like my chaos is managed for the day. And then one final minor nit with the Forever Notes system, and that is the heavy asterisk. So in the setup, he has you set up a um, keyboard replacement. So if you hit the asterisk twice, it will replace that with this heavy asterisk that you see at the beginning of all of the documentation. And while it looks cool and it has a good meaning, you know, there's, there's thought behind it on his website. Um, occasionally I do still write in Markdown. And when you go into a program like Bear that kind of hides the formatting of Markdown, bold is denoted by two asterisks in Markdown. So some of the things that I had copied and pasted or written in Markdown before when I went into them on the computer then and the asterisks showed up, the computer was trying to replace both of those with the heavy asterisks and then the bold would go away. So I just kind of got annoyed with that after a while. Um, like I said, I like still writing my newsletter in Markdown and Bear gives me options to export it in ways that make my life a little bit easier when I paste it into Substack. So that aside, you know, I dropped the heavy asterisks and on my hub pages, I started using emojis in front of stuff. So still denotes a hub page um, from a regular note, so you can tell the difference, and it's a little bit more fun at the same time. Now, of course, Apple Notes still has some limitations 
Um, speed and sync lately has been a big problem for me with over 1300 notes in my library. Sometimes it's just really slow to update and I'm working on a bunch of different devices. So I, you know, hop between my laptop, my desktop, my iPad and my phone all the time. And I'm noticing the sync between all of these devices to iCloud has just been pretty slow. I don't know if that's because of just the sheer number of notes that I have or the fact that I'm using tags in smart folders or if the Pro Notes add-in that I use on the Mac has anything to do with it. I'm not sure, but I just know that it's an annoyance to me at this point. And sometimes when I use bare notes and the sync happens instantly, it just makes me want to switch at this point. Um, the other thing I don't like about Apple Notes is that backlinks aren't automatic. So when you're linking all these notes together, there's no way to easily navigate between them yet. I hope Apple adds that in the future. The setup versus something like Notion. You know, if you're thinking about a system like this, you probably have heard of Notion. You may have downloaded it and tried to set it up. Um, I think the Forever Notes framework to set up in Apple Notes is far simpler than setting up Notion in a way that makes sense. I find Notion to be pretty difficult to use. I uh, often have to use AI to help me. You know, I'm not an expert in the program, so sometimes it's just easier to type into ChatGPT and ask a question about how I'm supposed to do something. All right, that's probably enough negatives of the framework because... Look, it's a free framework. You can take pieces of it that you like, take pieces of it that you don't like and throw them out. You know, use what you want. There's all this documentation. Nobody's forcing this onto you, right? So Matthias has given away all of this stuff for free. And now there is a paid um, setup. If like you're really new to Apple Notes and you needed help setting that up, you can hop on there and uh, and do a workshop with Matthias, which like, thank goodness. I'm glad he finally released some way to get paid for this genius system because he really does deserve it. And the information he's put out for free, both on the webpage and his YouTube channel is just worth its weight in gold. He's made the setup as seamless as he can within Apple's limitations that we talked about. So there's a bunch of different shortcuts he gives away, you know, the pictures that he uses in the documentation. And the guide online is just really easy to follow along and set up the, the system. And he has it set up in a way that you get the most important bits first. And some of the other stuff can fall behind as you start using the system, you can figure out if you want to implement them or not. And I've already mentioned smart folders and tags. I really wouldn't have started using those without this system. So that's been the biggest leap forward in my Apple Notes workflow. I probably would have been on something like Notion or a different program by now if I didn't have this added functionality that I discovered from the Forever Notes framework. So ultimately, I'm really thankful this framework exists. And if you're like me and you were on a Tiago Forte style para, you know, folders laid out sort of Apple Notes method, then I think you should give the Forever Notes framework a try. And if you're brand new to Apple Notes and just starting out, it's definitely the best place to start, in my opinion. Go to his website, read through the documentation, watch the videos, figure out what parts are going to work for you. Take those and incorporate them, tweak what you need to, and leave out what you don't need. So let me know in the comments down below. Are you using some or all of the Forever Notes system in your Apple Notes setup? And hit subscribe if you want more Apple Notes tips, productivity shortcuts, and product reviews. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, later.